This is Cooling Current FM at 8.5 WJSU and the SIP.FM as we celebrate Public Radio Music Day 2022. In the studio with me today is the songstress, the lyricist, the local legend, the lovely, look at those L's, Angela Walls. Welcome, <laughs> welcome, Angela, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. So happy to have you here sharing your talent with us and our listeners here today. How are you feeling? I feel wonderful. You I feel, feel blessed. I feel honored that you gave me the call. Thank you so much. Well, we appreciate you answering the call, okay? Mm -hmm. It's one thing to dial the number, it's another thing to pick up. Right. <laughs> so, so it is Public Radio Music Day here and we are super excited. Um, so the theme for 2022 is uh, discovering the sound of local communities. And I think that we uh, kind of got away from that with, um, you know, COVID and, you know, being able to perform, you know, as musicians and Absolutely. and needing that, right? So we spent all of this time inside and now we, we're almost rediscovering what our communities uh, sound like. And so we are definitely not discovering you, <laughs> but we are excited experiencing where you are in this uh, season of your of your career. Um, so talk to me about um, music. Where, what was your first concert? That I performed or that I went that to? That you went to. My first concert that I went to <laughs> was New Edition back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> back in the day? Back in the day, yes. yeah. Yeah. Um, do you remember your first record that you purchased? CD, tape? My first LP uh -huh. was Michael Jackson's Thriller. Okay. I was a, I was a little kid, uh -huh. but I was happy to have Are it. Are you justifying purchasing Michael Jackson? No, I'm just justifying that I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, I got and you. My dad was a musician, yeah. so he had a bunch of LPs, and that was the first one he bought me. Okay, and so um, music has obviously been a thing for you forever? Yes. Forever. For as long as I can remember. He was a bass player, and I just remember as a kid, um, he would be playing music, and he would always just tell me, just listen to that groove, listen to that beat, just feel it in your bones, and... As I started coming into my own, those are the parts that I would gravitate to. If it's a great bass line, I'm in there. <laughs> I love it. Gotta love a bassist. Oh, yes, yeah. indeed. Yes, indeed. I realized at one point that I was not listening to the drummer, but I was actually listening to the bass. And exactly. I said, oh, wow. It has yes. its own vibe. Yes, yes, it does. It does. So uh, at what point like, did your your parents kind of see something in you and say, oh, she's she's going to be a singer. We're going to push this. I mean, where did you have any uh, professional training? How? Actually, no. No? I did sing in the choir um, as a early teen, but I was hanging with some friends, and my friends made me realize that there was a voice in me. Mm -hmm. We were just, just hanging out, and um, I think we were singing... Luther Vandross and Cheryl Lynn's If This World Were Mine. So when I came in with the Cheryl Lynn part, I was all in my zone, eyes closed. And <laughs> when I opened my eyes, everybody was just jaw dropped. Like, you sound just like that lady. And I'm like 12. And so oh, wow. from that point, I started paying attention to what I sound like. You know, you hear a lot of people that say, you know, at age two and three. Right, right, right. I didn't realize it that early, but at that point, I started paying attention to what I sounded like. And I began mimicking people and learning how to do little things. So that's how I was taught. And um, I guess, did you ever reach a point? Uh, how long have you been doing this professionally now? Professionally, 30 plus years. So did you ever reach a point where you didn't want to mimic, you know, you were finding your own voice. Yes. I started writing songs actually in high school 
and you know just trying to find the voice to create the melody and everything for that that's when I realized okay I have my own sound but I still had to work towards developing that as I've started performing live in different places and it took a while but I finally found what was me and it's a little bit of all of that jazz. yes right <laughs> right 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 did you uh do you find yourself when you're writing do you find yourself making uh, or writing the music first or writing like do you write with a with a melody in mind or can you write lyrics dry like without any sort of I melody. can do both actually. Sometimes I'll just feel a melody and I'll just go with it and just write. I can write a whole song with just the melody in mind. Mm -hmm. And then I have to figure out, okay, so what kind of music should go to this? That to me is the hardest because I can never really just say, no, I need you to play this note or right, that note. Right, right, right. But I prefer writing to the music. Yeah. Because the music is already there. I just have to find my way through it. Right, right. Do you write often now? I haven't been lately. I mean, with the pandemic, it's like, I'll be honest with you, it kind of affected me physically mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. And so I haven't really lifted the pen, but lately, well, let me say this. I have two sons that are musically inclined and they- She does, people. <laughs> <laughs> they have really inspired me to get back into it. Hmm. I never left it, but I just kind of put it aside for a moment and kind of started focusing on trying to get myself together health-wise. Mm -hmm. But just hearing them every time they present something and say, mom, check this out. I'm like, oh, I like that. Can I get that beat? Can I write something to that beat? Mm -hmm. And so that got me back into writing. And so I got some things coming up soon. Yeah, that's good. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> um, so as you know, this is Public Radio Music Day. And um, with the theme, I was kind of worried about how that would attract an artist, you know, um, someone such as yourself who has obviously, you know, performed alongside some some awesome talent. You know, you've been out front yourself. Um, it's taken you, you know, to, to various places. Um, you got some passport stamps? I actually don't. Because I, my okay. first passport, I just got two years ago, right before the pandemic hit. I was about to go to Japan with Dorothy Moore. Wow. And Dorothy Moore is actually the very first artist that I ever traveled and performed with back in 1994. Mm -hmm. So she still calls me when she wants to do some live performing. Yeah. She always tells me I'm her first call. Yeah. And if I can't do it, then she'll go on down the list. Yeah. So that's an honor for me. Absolutely. And usually when she calls, I come a run. Absolutely. <laughs> that's local legend. That's legend, you know, right. uh, Dorothy Moore that she's talking about y'all. Um, and well, you know, but, but we have, you know, a certain, I guess, pride in claiming these artists, you know, um, so it, it brings me to the question of the, the, the L word, the, the local word, you know, uh, do you find that there is a stigma attached to it, that it means that, oh, you're, you're stuck in this box, right? Artists today, we're talking about genres and nobody wants to be in, in a genre box these right. days, right? So do you, do you find that that puts you in sort of a, a regional box? Is it more positive or negative? I used to feel that way, but again, with the changing times with music and how it's presented to the world now, nobody's a local artist anymore. Everybody can, and anybody can be independent. Right. And as long as you have the platform to, like the social media platforms, um, the digital platforms to release something of quality, then the world is your oyster. So it kind of takes away from the locality of everything. But you still want your local community to embrace you as their superstar. Right, right. Have you had um, any memorable experiences uh, working with people on the road? Oh, all the time, yes. Um, I've opened up for various artists and I've been multiple places within the United States. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think the highest peak I've gone is Winthrop, Washington. Mm. 
And when I tell you, the altitude is way different up there. <laughs> but um, just memorable moments. It's just the camaraderie. Yeah. Learning to figure things out, even when you're in a bind. You know, you may have may not have everything you need, but you find a way to make it work. Right. So it's all about, you know, being able to just work on the fly. So those are valuable lessons that I learned. Yeah. I think uh, as artists, you know, traveling, um, you know, every experience can can be a new experience. You know, every mm -hmm. opportunity to get out there on uh, on the road um, is is going to bring something, you know, memorable. Absolutely. Uh, and in fact, we featured... Um, or rather, we're going to be featuring Kimball Funches on WJSU uh, for Public Radio Music Day. And in talking to our engineer, Mr. Dale Morris, earlier, he said, oh, out on the road with Kimball, and he has some of the best stories. And he just went on about all of these oh, stories, yeah. <laughs> you know. And so in uh, my interview with Kimball, he started talking about Johnny Taylor. And my eyes got big because... Dale had mentioned a story about Johnny Taylor oh, that he yeah. told. And I was like, oh, my God, is he going to tell, the, like, the same story? No, you can't. We're on air. Like, <laughs> no, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. But it was hilarious. And if he had uh, told that story, I didn't, I didn't, I wouldn't have been able to compose myself. Like, it was, it was very funny. But I know that things like that happen and, and we can treasure those things as, yeah. as artists. Um, I have a Johnny Taylor story. No, I don't. <laughs> I actually did perform on a couple of his songs, but I never got to meet him. So, you know, just being being a studio musician, you know, that opened a lot of doors too. So I'm, I'm on a lot of albums with a lot of people yeah, yeah. that I never met. Wow. wow. <laughs> but hey, I can still claim it. Yeah, sure. So um, did you did you find yourself, you found yourself more withdrawn during the pandemic, like less writing during the pandemic? I did. I, did. I mean... I would still find inspiration. I could be watching a TV show, and you know how, especially Hallmark, the, the sappy love stories, right. and then you hear just the violins playing, and it just kind of sparks an emotion. And I'm like, that sounds like a song. And then, but what I'll do then, I'll immediately turn it off because I don't want what I create to mimic what's already there. Sure. So I just try to build and develop what I'm feeling from what I just heard. Yeah, yeah. How did we uh, come to the creation of the music that you're sharing with our audience today? Ooh. Because I, I, I'm gonna say this, like, I feel like it's, it's difficult as an instrumentalist, right, to name a piece. I don't know why I think that they're so different from vocalists, you know, but like, oh, an instrumentalist, like, uh, the wind, you know, the the soft wind or something. It's it's a it's a title like that, and it's like, where did you come up with that? Where where in this song do, are you feeling the soft wind? You know what I mean? Right. As an as an <laughs> instrumental piece, you know, you got to come up with these names, right? But vocalists, I feel like we have it easy because oh, here are the words, boom, I'm gonna take a piece of these words, and bam, now right. I have a what's, title. What's the hook going right, on? right, yeah. exactly, exactly. So. <laughs> So we have some interesting titles here, you know, like, are you, let's see, we've got, are you telling me? Feeling. Me. Feeling. Are we, I can't read my own writing. Are you feeling me? Don't you want to, baby? I miss you. So where do we, where does the inspiration or where has the inspiration for some of these come from? Honestly. Is it always a, an experience, a, a, a real experience? So, there's some truth to it. There's some fantasy to it, uh -huh. and there's a lot of imagination to it. <laughs> Honestly, it's what I feel from the music. So I never know what I'm going to write about. I just listen to the music, and then I just create a melody from what I'm feeling. Right. And then I find the words that will fall into that melody. Now, I will say, are you feeling me? Mm -hmm. That one is like you're reminiscing on good times with an old flame and you run into each other again. And you're just reminding him of where you used to be and you're asking, hey, are you feeling me? Right. And it's kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. It, are, would you say that there are any of, any one of these that would be your, your favorite? The truth, I will say the truth is my favorite. Why is that? 
because you know we, it's about love and it's about finding the love that is the truth in your own experience and we go through a lot of good times and hard times and in, in love and life but when you find that one person that you can get through it all with mm -hmm. then that makes it worth sharing with the world and the song actually says um um I stand here before you with nothing but love for you because you are the truth if ever there was a truth because it's not necessarily saying that the the end all be all truth but if there ever was a truth right then that's what you offer me right so you know it's still saying it might not be it's the closest thing to it that right I know right so that's kind of where that one came from and I can't say that it was about any specific experience in my life because I'm a dreamer. You know, I like I said, I've loved some, I've lost some. Mm -hmm. And I still believe that that true love matters. So, hey, honey, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get that on the cap of the shirt. True love matters. Yeah. True love matters. So, this is my own imagination here. Would you say that there was anybody out there who would, who could hear? Do you, you go by Angela Walls when you're performing? I actually go by the, the Angela Walls. Who would hear the Angela Walls and say, she's talking about me? Yes. I, I, if it's not about you, it's about your friend. <laughs> So somebody out there has experienced some of this stuff that I'm writing about. So yeah, somebody. That's why I say it's for who it's for. Right, right. Man, that's great. And that's a lesson. <laughs> I had to learn that the hard way because, you know, of course, when you're out in, in the public eye and you're performing, you want everybody to love you. Right. I had to realize, you know, it's not for everybody, but who it's for, they will get it. And they'll let you know that they get it. And that is inspiration. Yeah. I've, there have been times where I felt like, you know, especially, you know, getting on up in age, mm -hmm. and thinking, okay, well, my time has come and gone. And I'll do that very next gig, feeling, you know, kind of feeling down about it. But somebody in that audience, uh, it'll be somebody new that's never heard me. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, where have you been? I felt everything that you said, and that's enough to keep you going on to the next one. Right. I was like, you know what? Okay, God, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Because it was meant for me to sing to that person. Right. For them to feel what I had to say. Right. Do you think that um, our area provides you an opportunity to um, share your gift at this point? I do. Yeah? Yes. So there are enough places and spaces to to go and be creative. There is, and I mean, it's it's enough out there for us all to eat. We just gotta know how to share. Yeah. Hmm. So it's Public Radio Music Day, and you know, with a variety of ways, you know, to get music, you know, a part of our mission is uh, music discovery. Okay. And you know, that, Again, as I mentioned, we're not discovering you, but we are bringing your talents, you know, to our listeners, to our audience, you know. Um, and I guess I want to know what what do you think is the uh, significance of public radio in 2022? Well, I think the significance is having that platform to let everyone shine because... Like I said, I'm kind of from the old school. I know how it used to be. And you used to have to kind of grease palms or whatever. Right. And just to get somebody to play your music on the radio. But having that public radio platform, it's an outlet for discovery. So, you know, it's always going to be somebody that you may not have ever heard before. Right. And I make it a point to either pull up my um, whatever music platform and I'll, I'll find a song and then I will allow myself to listen to 
was like that. Mm -hmm. That you know, it'll just sure. randomly play something right, else. Right, right. I've discovered so many different genres, so many different styles, forms of um, just expression. Right. And I was like, I never heard of these. People. Right. Right. And so then you I think, go looking for them because just because of that. So absolutely. I think that that public radio twenty twenty two and beyond is going to open those doors for a lot of us local yeah. talents yeah. And, and many more. Because you, that can happen so much on platforms, you know, the, the different music platforms, you know, but those platforms kind of, uh, and while we all discover on those platforms, you know, and they all recommend, you know, that that kind of takes away from the time that we spend listening to our radios. That's true. You know, um, but I like what you said because I think that it does provide that in the same way for these artists, you know, for the, the local artists, for independent artists. Right. And that is definitely a part of our mission to shine that light on local and independent uh, artists. Absolutely. So, do you have a favorite public radio station? Never mind. You don't have to answer that. You don't have to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> so Angela, uh, the Angela Walls in the studio of WJSU and the SIP.FM with us today, celebrating Public Radio uh, Music Day 2022. And I want to know, I want you to let the uh, listeners know uh, where they can find you. Um, if you have any upcoming events coming um, in, in the area or outside of the area, you know, what, what you got going on? Okay, well, my music is available on all digital platforms, so just look for Angela Walls, and the album is called From These Lips. Also, you can find me on social media platforms. Um, you can just type in my name. Of course, on Instagram, it's going to have the handles. One is Kara Melody underscore is underscore me, mm -hmm. and I have the other one is called um, From These Lips underscore the brand. And on Facebook, you have Angela Walls, and mm -hmm. you also have Angela Walls Music, which is my music page. Okay. Do you have any shows coming up? Are you performing anywhere? Or? I don't have anything scheduled just yet, mm -hmm. but um, right now I'm working in the studio to start releasing some more music. Got you. From these lips, is that because you had a message? You had a message to send? Where did that title come from? Honestly, the title came after the album was finished. Mm. And the song, Are You Feeling Me, had a pretty nice intro. And I was just listening to it, you know, play, we were playing it back. And I was like, can we, like, snip that, move it to the side so I can create an intro? Mm -hmm. And it basically wants to, for me personally, I want to take away from what the industry expects you to look and sound and be like sure and you bring you back to the music so from these lips is really about e experiencing the gifts that i bring so that's what it's about and I, and I will just tell you the intro it just says close your eyes and listen open your mind and feel let your heart embrace the gifts i bring from these lips and that's what it's about and that's what we are going to enjoy today here for Public Radio Music Day 2022. Thank you so much, the Angela Walls, uh, for coming by today and sharing your gifts with us. Thank you, it was my pleasure.